So this is video number four, where I'm going to show you a really critical data structure that you're going to use all the time whenever you develop smart contracts for Ethereum. All right. So you're going to want to watch this whole thing. All right. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from Dappy Diversity. And on this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then click the like button down below and click subscribe. And if you want to master blockchain from the ground up all the way towards building your own real world applications, uh, then I can show you how to do exactly that. All right. Head on over to dappydiversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started. So in this video, we're going to talk about mappings inside of Solidity. All right. I'll explain what they are and how to use them, all right? So first and foremost, what is a mapping? Well, it's a data structure inside of Solidity, uh, kind of like an array, which we talked about in the last video. Um, you know, an array is a linked uh, list of items, or sorted list of items, I should say, that you can, you know, put, put information inside of and uh, do things with it. You can, you can fetch the items back out later. Uh, you can do lots of stuff with them. So a mapping is similar in that regard, but it's a little bit different, okay? A mapping is a key value store where you can look things up based on a key and then get a value back. So what do I mean by that? Well, here's an illustration that might help. Here is a key value relationship, okay? It's a table where you have a key here and then the corresponding value. And essentially the key is unique, so there's only one K1. And if you uh, look information up on this table, if you look for K1, here are the corresponding values, right? K just stands for key in this case. So you could kind of assume that there's no K and just say one, two, three, four. So if I say, show me the information in row four, well, here's the information in row four, or show me the information in row five, uh, here's the information in row five. So also, if you want to create new information on this table, you just say, here's the information that would go on K6, for example, and you could give it some new information, and later you could go and look that back up, okay? So that's what a mapping allows you to do inside of Solidity. It is a key value store. This is similar to other programming languages where you might have a hash table or hash or uh, maybe an associative array, okay? So I'll show you how to create a mapping inside Solidity like this. Uh, you just say, use the mapping keyword, mapping, all right? And then you tell it the key, you tell it the value, and then uh, you give it a name, like my mapping, all right? But I'm gonna uh, repurpose this and show you what it would look like for a real mapping. So in, the, in this case, let's do a mapping of names. So we'll call this names. So names like uh, Adam, Brian, and Carl, all right, we'll call it public. And what you do with the key and the value here is you specify the data type. So the names here are going to be strings, so I say string, and the key is going to be an integer. We're just gonna store information for like name one, name two, name three, name four. So we'll say unsigned integer or uint, all right? And um, that's how we'll do it. It's pretty simple. It's a pretty simple lookup. We'll just say name one is going to equal one string. Name two is equal to a different string. We can set that information and we can look it up. So let me uh, pause here and talk about how a mapping is different from an array. You know, in the last video, that's what we talked about. And you could store names inside of an array, but there's a few limitations. One is that arrays are zero-based index. So like if you want to look up the first name, um, you know, you have to look up name zero. And if you look at the second name, it's name one and so on and so forth. Sometimes you just want an ID, right? And that's essentially what this does is name one will be accessible by the ID one. So it makes the blockchain work somewhat like a database where you can just look information up. And mappings are one of the primary ways that we use Solidity smart contracts somewhat like a database, okay? Because don't, don't forget, the blockchain essentially is a database. You can put information on it and read it back out later, okay? It's a public ledger, and this is a way that you sort of treat it like a database. You give it an ID, and then you, here's the information that corresponds with that ID. So um, you could use mappings in different ways than just this, which we'll see later, but uh, let's continue on with this example. All right, so um, let's actually add some names to this mapping. I'll show you how it works. We'll do this inside the smart contracts constructor function. I'll say constructor, all right? And then don't forget the constructor function is just the function that gets run uh, whenever the smart contract is initialized or deployed to the blockchain. So it gets run once and only once. 
Um, and here's how you add the names to the mapping. Basically, you reference the name, so it'd be names, and then use these brackets, all right? And then you say like name one, all right, is equal to, we'll say Adam, all right? So uh, names one equals Adam, all right? We can do that again for names two, it's equal to Carl, names three is equal to, uh, well, let's just do, let's do Carl, let's do an ABC order here. Let's say Bruce and then Carl, okay? So basically we're gonna say name with an ID of one is equal to Adam, name uh, the ID of two is equal to Bruce and names ID of three is equal to Carl. So we can read this information back out of this mapping directly because we call it uh, public here. All right, this is a, a way that Solidity gives us a function to read these names back out, right? So let's go ahead and compile this and run it. Um, you know, if, you, if you're having trouble following along, don't forget to go to remix.ethereum.org and create a new contract called mycontract.soul, and you can just use the source code at this point in the video, okay? So go ahead and go to the compile step. All right, and then click compile. All right, we've got a little issue here. So the constructor needs to be public. My fault. Let's fix that. All right, and then deploy. Okay, so now we can just read the names out of the mapping. So say names one. All right, Adam, names two. Bruce, names three. It is Carl. All right, so what happens if we do name four? Empty string. Okay, so essentially what the mapping does is if you provide an ID that doesn't exist, it returns a default value. In this case, it's just an empty string. Okay. All right, so I'm going to kill that contract and go back to our development mode. Um, so let's continue on with this. Let's let's talk about how we can treat the blockchain more like a database with mappings. Essentially, what we can do is model arbitrary data and more complex data, okay, than just like strings or numbers or something like that. Uh, we can create mappings of our own custom data structures. So in one of the last couple of videos, we talked about how to create structs, which are a way to create your own data structure inside Solidity. So let's create um, a database of books, okay? So we start off by creating a book struct like this, say struct book, okay? And inside of here we say string title and then string author, okay? So this is how we create our own custom book with two attributes, title and author, both are strings, okay? And we can create a mapping of these books like this. Say mapping. Uh, we do an ID of an unsigned integer, uint. And we say book like this, okay. Then public books. So that's how we create our books mapping. So we can say book one, and then we can add a new book here with a title and an author. And then actually let me lowercase this. And then we can say book two, title, author, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It'll work just like a database. So now we can create a special function to add a book. So we won't do it automatically in the constructor like this. We'll create a special function to uh, add a book like this. Let's we'll say function add book. Okay. And then uh, we'll just do public. Uh, we'll add the arguments in a second, but here's how we add it. So we say books. Well, actually, let's, let's go ahead and add the arguments. So what do we need? We need to tell it uh, the ID, all right? And then also the title and then the author, okay? So we'll say uint ID and then string memory author or title and then string memory title, okay? So now with this information, we can add the book to the mapping like this, just like we did here. We say books. Uh, ID equals book. This is how you create a new book. And then say title and then author. All right, so that's how you would add a new book to our database, okay? The next um, is, well, let's, yeah, let's just go with that and observe it in action. So let's compile it. Does it run properly? Okay, I see what the issue is. Sorry, I did title twice. Uh, as me title and uh, let's do, let's see, title and then author. Okay, I'll try that again. Yeah, my fault. All right, so now let's compile it and deploy it. All right, and then let's try to add a book. So we can say book one will be my book. 
And we'll say the author is Dappy Diversity. And then say book two is, let's say Tom Sawyer. And then we'll say uh, Mark Twain. All right. And then we'll say book. Th Oops, that was book one. I think I did book one twice. Uh, let's just let's just see. So let's go ahead and read it out. Uh, look at book one. And then there you go. Title, Tom Sawyer, author Mark Twain. So sorry, I actually overwrote the first book. My fault. Let's go ahead and do book two. Uh, we'll be uh, two. And we'll say uh, War and Peace. We'll say Tolstoy. Let's give you the last name. And book. Books two, War and Peace by Tolstoy. Okay, perfect. All right, so that's how you would add books uh, with this mapping. So the next thing I want to show you is how to do nested mappings. All right, so this is a pretty critical thing to understand with Solidity because it allows you to model more complex data, all right? So uh, in this case, we just created a way to store books and store, you know, all the books that would belong to the smart contract. But what if you wanted to store, you know, books that belong to just you, right? Or books that belong to someone else. Uh, and then sort of namespace those books under your username or your account on the Ethereum blockchain. Well, that's what a nested mapping would allow you to do. So what is that? Well, a nested mapping is essentially just a mapping inside of a mapping, all right? Or a mapping that returns a mapping. So you basically say mapping and then like, you know, key. And then the value would be another mapping with like, you know, key two and then value two, all right? And then public my mapping. Okay, so in this case, what we want to do is model all the books that belong to us or someone else. Okay, so we can do a mapping that looks just like this. We can basically have a, a books mapping with a an ID, a uint, and then a book. But we can uh, assign them to specific users based on their Ethereum address. So the key here can be address, the address type, okay? So basically I can say, pass my address in and then get all of my books based on their ID, okay? So I'll show you that works. Say function add book, or I'll say add my book and say uh, uint ID string memory uh, title string memory author public. And what we'll do here is basically just store it based on the user who calls the function. All right. So Solidity has a global variable called message sender or msg.sender um, that uh, allows you to capture the address of the person calling the function. Okay. So in this case, we'll do it like this. We'll say my books and pass it msg.sender. All right, this will be the Ethereum address of the person calling the function. All right, then you use a nested mapping and then you use another bracket like this and say uh, ID and then equals book and then title and then author, All right? So look, it works just like this. Here's how you would do a normal mapping, right? So you see that here and then that just returns a second mapping and then you do the same thing again, okay? But you do different keys. So here's the key for the address and then here's the key for the actual book that gets returned, okay? So I'll show you how that works in action. Compile it. Okay, so we got an issue here. Title author, I think I had a typo here maybe. Let's see here, undeclared identifier. Okay, so I forgot to change this up here. So my books should be the name of the mapping, not my mapping, all right? So try that again, compile, and then we'll deploy. All right, so now let's see the my books in action. All right, so what we wanna do um, is actually get the address that we're currently using. So go up here to this menu and copy the account, all right? So we'll keep that handy. 
But I'll go ahead and add a book. Uh, let's say IDB1. And we'll say, you know, War and Peace. Let's be Tolstoy. All right. And then add book. And then we'll say, you know, book two. And then we'll say uh, the Republic. Plato. Add my book. All right. So now we can um, paste in, you know, click on my books, right? Um, let's see here. So just paste in your address here. Okay. And then we'll look at unit one. Click call. There we go. War and Peace. Then two. There we go. The Republic. So you can do the same thing. You know, you can switch accounts here. Click a different account. Click copy. And then, uh, you know, we could do book one for them. Could be the will to power. This could be Nietzsche. I think I spelled that right. Maybe wrong. All right. And then click my book here. Oops. Let's do that. Click one. Click call. And there we go. Will to power by Nietzsche. All right, so that's an overview of how to use mappings inside Solidity. All right, this is a pretty common uh, thing to use for like database type development for smart contracts. There's lots of different ways you can use mappings, but that gives you an introduction uh, on how to you know use them inside your own smart contracts. So I hope you like this video. Again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. Um, and if you want you know to take this the next step further and get the full uh, step by step plan on how to master blockchain, uh, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. I can show you how to do exactly that. All right. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.